Oh, it looks like we are live. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> wait. I wasn't sure there for a second. Okay. Well, um, make sure the volume's off on that because it's going to be all like. I did. I turned the volume down. Uh, so tonight we're actually using a new camera and a new microphone. So before we get too far into it, uh, let me know how is the video quality and how is the audio quality? Um, is everything clear? Do we need to turn the volume down a little bit? Do we need to turn it up a little bit? Just go ahead and let us know really quick before we jump too far into this. A couple of weeks back, we uh, went a full minute and a half without realizing our microphone was completely muted. So anyways, um, while we do that, I'm going to go ahead and go through the comments really quick. Uh, looks like we have... Fingers. This is like distracting to interpret. Do you see that? Ridiculous. And <laughs> Those are hot Cheeto fingers. We... Wow. Not to call right you out. the bus with it. So every once in a great while, <laughs> I'll eat hot Cheetos, right? They're like my favorite. Oh. Well, one of my favorite things to do with hot Cheetos is I won't just eat them out of the bag. Oh, no. I take a lemon juice and I like lemon juice that sucker up. I'm like, mm, 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 mm. so it's like all like bowl of lemon juice and you're just like, oh, and I'll eat it. Well, it stains my fingers because I won't use a fork. It's part of the experience. And it like stains my fingers red. I have, it's not until I take a shower and like my, I'm like soaking wet. Like I can wash my hands. It doesn't matter. But when I take a shower, it usually goes away. But yeah, it always stains my fingers. It stains the bowl <laughs> that I use too. So it's like my hot cheeto bowl. But anyways, I just noticed it while I was signing and I was like, oh no, it's distracting. You're going to have to interpret because look at this. It looks like I've got like red <laughs> tape on my fingers. Although that, some people do that. Um, yeah, but not cheers. not randomly like Clay this. <laughs> This is like this okay, horrible. so really briefly, uh, just to kind of give you a quick heads up as far as what to expect tonight. Um, so tonight, I just covered up my own notes. Um, so tonight, we're going to be going over uh, what's new with, with us and um, what we're going to be uh, doing for the next month or so. And also, we'll be sharing some tips and tricks as far as how you can better recall and reproduce everything that you've been learning up until this point. Uh, one of the big pain points of learning a new language is remembering everything that you've learned uh, because uh, our retention is pretty low. Uh, oftentimes we forget about half of what we learn in just 24 hours. Uh, so we'll be sharing some uh, strategies that can help you remember uh, more of what you learn. And that's actually going to be the theme. We'll be doing a deeper dive uh, this Friday during our uh, workshop. And so tonight somebody was asking about the giveaways. And so the, we will be doing giveaways I tonight. I forgot that this Friday was the workshop that you might be doing alone. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's uh, see here. Yeah, so Emily was asking, are we doing giveaways? So yeah, we're going to be incorporating some uh, receptive practice, uh, some finger spelling receptive practice. And we'll be hopefully doing five names in total throughout the live stream. And we'll try to do one every 10 minutes. And uh, every... If you're first one to respond with the correct answer, then you'll gain uh, free access to that workshop that we're hosting uh, this Friday at five o'clock Pacific time on Zoom. And we really enjoy doing these uh, Zoom workshops because we get to see you face to face. And um, we're also here to answer any questions that you might have. And so we're going to try to keep this to an hour this evening. And it is great to see so many of you here with us today. Um, just a really quick uh, bear. He says, hello, I've been following your channel channel for a while, but this is the first time I'm tuning in to a live chat. I hope my name shows up as Learn ASL. Um, so yeah, th thanks for uh, watching. And I know so many have been able to find uh, our videos helpful, but more importantly, um, I think we've been able to redirect uh, a lot of people to uh, other channels as well, uh, like uh, ASL That and uh, Bill Vickers, uh, Ashley Cl uh, uh -oh, Clarkson. Ashley Clark, uh, who's with the Signed with Heart, uh, Deaf Duo, and there's a ton. Uh, so we uh, encourage you to check out our resources page, and we have a list of a lot of YouTube channels that can be really helpful, as well as other uh, resources that can help you learn the language. Um, Toots Magoots, your favorite. I uh, just signed up for ASL1, so congratulations on that. Great. That is awesome. I'll tell you. So as part of my degree, I have to take ASL1 which I was like, I could have challenged the class. I have the right to challenge it to say, I don't need to take ASL one, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to do it because I, I joined the class late. Like it was crazy for the semester. So like, no, I'm just going to do it. It's fine. And so I joined the class ASL one, you know, it's everything's on online. So my teacher only ever sees me when I send him my videos. 
well, the first assignment that we had, he says, I need you to do your ABCs and introduce yourself. And I'm like, cool. So he has this platform set up where we go to the special website. We record ourselves and send it to him. Our ASL teacher's deaf, by the way. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I sit there and I'm like, all right. And uh, so I'm like, hi, my name is Johnny. My sign name is JM. It's nice to meet you. I said, I'm doing the assignment, the ABCs and the introductions. Okay, here I go. And so I'm like, A, B, C, D, E, F. And I just went, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, that's it. Nice to meet you. Bye. And I like sent it off. He comes back like, like a few days later, that's how he grades. He sends you his own video, like tells you like how you did and everything. And he goes, wait, who are you? <laughs> he, goes, the, he goes, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> he goes, you're in my ASL one class. You finish. No, who are you? He goes, you finish. No, why are you here? Why? What's up? Who, who are you? You're an interpreter. He knows what I'm doing. He like figured it out like quick. He was like, I know what, I know what you're doing. And I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, I'm an interpreter. I'm taking ASL. And he's like, mm -hmm, I know. He goes, okay. Okay. And so he, he has fun with me. Cause he's like, we'll sit there and just chat it up during his, his zoom meeting times or whatever. And so another assignment we had, we had to like explain all this stuff but it's supposed to be very basic. But I sat there with like a five minute video, just like ta -ta 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 -ta, and full sign. And so he responds back and he's like, I love getting like able to talk with you. So he's like responding back. But ASL, like the ASL one class is a little more in depth than I ever thought. I was like, wow, this is like really cool, you know? And it was, it's neat. It's, it's a fun class. And that next semester I'm supposed to, technically part of this program i mean take asl two three but they're like no just challenge it so you don't have and i'm like oh okay but i thought it was kind of fun it was neat so you're gonna have a lot of fun in your asl one class they're they're a lot of fun you can do it there you're learning so many new things and like they'll talk about pronouns and oh it was cool yeah so you're gonna you'll have a lot of fun that's awesome um before. Sassy. He's. Uh, I watch Bill Vickers all the time now, along with your videos. Bill Vickers is like the de facto person to go I know, to. He's everyone awesome. like, like, oh yeah, Bill Vickers. He's he's amazing. Um. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So actually, I've seen Learn ASL uh, comment a lot on our videos, and we'll try to go back and forth and, and get to everybody. But yeah, um, this was previously Bear who commented that you've been watching my, the channel for a while. Uh, Learn ASL um okay so let's do see here wanna, i'm gonna go ahead when and... are we going to do this oh i was gonna save that for the end so we do have one okay. special announcement that we're gonna save for the I end call it, special. <laughs> it might make people uh, something sad. new um <laughs> it might make people sad <laughs> some people so but it, it, it'll be okay so <laughs> he's um... like it'll be fine don't worry okay so let me go ahead and let's do one finger spelling uh receptive practice really quick and we'll do a quick giveaway and then I'm going to jump right into the first tip as far as how you can better recall what you've been learning. Um, so the first name that we're going to be doing is uh, it's going to be a woman's name to give a hint. Wait, a and so later. the way we, we do this is um, oh, if you're, if you're <laughs> new, we'll do, That's gonna be fun. yeah, um, we'll <laughs> finger spell a name and I'll do it at kind of a moderate speed and I'll do it a couple other times. But the first person to reply back with the correct answer uh, will gain free access to the workshop that we're hosting on Zoom this Friday at, at five o'clock. And so without further ado, here is the first name for tonight. OK, I'll do it again. Ooh, that was sloppy. I know. I was like, shame on you. It's been a long day. <laughs> I'll do it. Your red fingers. No oh, hate. Okay. There's hot um, cheetah lovers out there who understand. <laughs> There's some probably out there who saw uh, my fingers and went. Okay, ah, so it looks like why we're is just nothing coming up over here? We're just waiting for it to pop up over here. Uh, there it goes. Boom. Boom. That okay, person. Melissa Durant. Okay, so you were the first one that we see on our side. A close second uh, is Sassy Stephanie, and then April and Mitzi. <laughs> 
Uh, don't pick me, Linda. I think Toots Magoots has already won uh, access to the workshop this Friday. So uh, anyway, going back. If you have back. won access for this workshop this Friday, please let us know. The hard yeah. part is is there's a lot of people. I mean, we're looking at like five people every week, and then it gets confusing. Like, wait, who, 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 who? So yeah, if you've already won for this week and like you're like one of the first persons to get it, let us know. Not for this week, but for this workshop. Let us know. So that way we can. Oh, she's a Patreon. Already. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Cool, so cool. she already has so the access to it. who did I say was second? Sassy, Stephanie? Well, no, no. She's not the one who said that. Toots Magoo said Oh, Toots said, Magoo said she's already a Patreon. So let's okay. go back to Melissa. Melissa Durant. Okay. And so, so um, if you haven't already won, then oh, congratulations. Yeah. Um. I'll pick pick someone else. Um, oh. I'm I'm working. Oh, oh bummer. Okay. okay, so it was so sassy no. Stephanie yeah. was number two to get the correct answer. Um, so sassy Stephanie, go ahead and send me an email at chris at ASL Basics uh, right here, and just let me know that you won, and I'll go ahead and give you all the Zoom Zoom credentials for you to be able to join us uh, this Friday. Um, okay, uh, so I'm, I'm gonna jump. Gonna I'm gonna jump into my first tip. <laughs> <laughs> you see how he said that? I'm going to go into my first tip. Stop talking. <laughs> he knows I'm going to start going. Okay. Um, so go ahead and go through the comments and go and pick one. I'm going to talk really briefly about my favorite book that I never talk about. Um, and pr primarily because this is really targeted towards educators and teachers, but it's called uh, Visible Learning uh, for Literacy. Now, if you are a teacher or an educator, like this is a book that you absolutely should go through, um, particularly because it talks about the most effective uh, teaching techniques. And conversely, it can also be the most effective learning techniques. And so just to give you a really quick uh, run through about what this is about. Um, so this is um, if you've ever heard of a meta analysis, they'll take studies and then they'll um, do a study upon those studies. And so it's a meta-analysis that consists of 1,200 meta-analysis with over 70,000 studies and 300 million students. And this has taken place over like a 15-year period. And the goal in, in this is to really figure out what's effective. And so at the end of this, um, they actually have an appendix that's full of all the most effective teaching techniques. Um, for instance, one of the best uh, te teaching techniques is a classroom discussion, uh, feedback, reciprocal teaching, where you have the students teach a subject that they were just taught. Uh, so these are really, really effective learning uh, strategies. And actually the teacher that recommended this to me had been teaching for 41 years. And I saw firsthand, I was with her classroom for an entire year and I saw uh, it was an eighth grade classroom and uh, students that were performing around second to third grade level um, academically. And by the end of that year, many of her students were performing at a 10th to 11th grade level. And so the accelerated learning that happened in that classroom was absolutely amazing. And she attributed a lot of it uh, to this. And so they even have it measurable to where how effective each one is. And so to give you an idea, point a score of 0 0.4 is about one year's worth of learning in one year's time. And some of these are worth like 1.4, like triple. So, and they can stack on top of each other. And so this is how she was able to uh, help her students really accelerate their learning. So all of this to say is to, um, if you might notice, if you go through this basically database, let me see if I can get that up on screen. And so this is measurable as far as how effective things are. And so if you look at this as a, as a student, you can really uh, figure out what's most worth your time. And um, ironically, like there are things in here that are will give you less than a year's progress in a year's time. Like homework isn't actually that effective overall. But if you're um, maintaining motivation, if you use concept mapping, um, using study skills, and again, like that reciprocal teaching, the feedback and the classroom discussion, uh, Socratic seminars, uh, self-reported grades and student expectations where they will um, kind of self-evaluate like, well, how did I really do? Instead of the teacher giving them just a hard grade, it really makes them um, uh, analyze and really think about, well, was that effective for me? So anyways, uh, all this to say is if you are learning anything new, especially language, active learning is going to be much more effective than passive learning. 
And so one example of passive learning is, you know, sitting down and watching a video, right? And maybe you're, and not to say that that's not effective, but if you can turn something like that into an active process, um, instead of just watching the video passively, try to take notes, really follow along, maybe really dive into it. And let's take this to sign language and say you want to um, really analyze a video and it doesn't have to be long. Take like a 60 seconds worth of video. Uh, for example, uh, the Daily Moth. And they're, they're a deaf news network where they will uh, do news summaries of every day. And maybe just take 60 seconds of that or maybe one story and turn the captions off and just watch it. And really focus and try to pick up on the patterns and maybe pick up signs that you recognize. And maybe you don't understand that much and that's okay. Go back a second time and turn the closed captions on. And then that's going to give you a lot of context about what it is that they're actually signing. And then do your, and then go back a third time. And then you turn the closed captions off and then really try to take the context that you've learned and actively try to understand that person. And this is a good substitute if you're unable to have somebody else practice with you in real time. And one of the reasons why discussions are so, so effective is because you will, that's kind of built in where it's an active process. It's not something that you can just, you know, kick back and I'm going to just passively watch this. Like if you're in a conversation and you don't respond, you know, that there's an accountability there and you have to pay attention and you have to, you know, actively think of how am I going to respond to that person? Because you have to figure out what it is that they're talking about. Uh, so try when you're making, um, when you're learning a new language, really try to find ways to make the process active and not passive. So that's kind of the, the overall uh, theme for that first tip. Okay. Wait. <laughs> Hold on. Boom. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> so excited. That's going to be so cool. <gasps> You'll have to let us know how it goes. Oh, I just enrolled in Gallaudet Online ASL 1 through 4. Nerves and excited at the same time. Yes, I don't blame you. Have you ever seen, like, gone? to the Gallaudet uh, University in um, Washington, D.C. Oh, it's so cool. We went, we went 2018. It was yeah. 2018 because Paige was five months old. That was fun. That was a fun trip. Uh, it, actually, it really was. We had like the best time, but. Well, um, it was really hot. We went during the summer. It was hot. Um, and it was like 100 degrees. I tell you. With, I don't know, like 80% humidity. It we was... were with like all of his family. Well, it was like. His parents, his brother, his brother's three kids, me, Chris, and Paige. And Paige was like this big. She was only like five months old. <laughs> and let me tell you, my mother-in-law was like. Yes, we use over post captions it. on our TV. We sure. were like, oh, she was over it. She's like, I want, because we were at the uh, Abraham Lincoln Memorial. And it, we were trying to get a picture. And it was hot. It was so hot. And she's like, no. And so we went to the uh, Capitol building and went inside and did a tour. And it was a lot cooler in there. But, whew, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> So, <laughs> Diana Brown, thanks for becoming a new member. Oh, wonderful! So, yeah, you'll you'll be uh, able to join us for our workshop this Friday as well. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah, I that bet. was a really I cool trip. <clears throat> I bet. I'm so excited for you. That's gonna be so cool. Oh my god, that's so cool. Okay, so let's do the second name. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I want to, I give people more time to be prepared. You're I give like, them challenge. You're just like, bam. And I'm like, be nice. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, ready? I'm going to do it with my left hand because my right hand's currently red occupied. So here we go. What? My mom, Spidey, since the tingle. Paige, <laughs> are you okay? Okay, just checking. Hello, Cindy. Just kind of going back right. through the comments while I was monologuing. Hold on. I wanna wait, okay, wait, so it looks like we are having wait. some answers come in, and wait. <laughs> Here it is, uh, Melissa. Man, you're fast. I know you okay, are fast. Um, but our next one. Next one. Okay, so 
I think you got excited, and this is a typo, uh, Mitzi. And I'm going to go ahead and give it to the second person down as well that got it. Um, so Sassy Stephanie already got it. Mm -hmm. So Connie, um, yeah, I'm actually, I remember seeing you at the Zoom session tonight. Uh, so congratulations. Um, so Mitzi and Connie. Uh, go ahead and send me an email at chris at aslbasics.com and I'll go ahead and send you the Zoom information so you can join our workshop this Friday. Somebody asked if Kathy is spelled with a C. I actually have a friend who spells it mm. with a K. Pretty cool, right? Yep, she spells hers with a K. Kathy. Yeah. Um, okay, um, so... Oh, I lost my thought. I had a thought. You had a thought? It's gone. Right. Okay, so... My first tip tonight is, you know, make the process active, not passive. My second one is actually it has to do, do a little bit with the parameters. And this kind of goes into making the process okay. a little bit more active. And actually, before I go into the um, parameters, I'm going to mention one other book that I really enjoy. And again, this is great for educators and parents and also for students. And this is this one's called The Motivated Bra Brain by uh, Gail Gregory. And in here, uh, she talks about uh, Norman Webb's depth of knowledge. And maybe you've heard of the four different levels of learning. And I'm just, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but level one is recall and reproduction, which basically is rote memorization. And this is, you know, going over it over and over and over again um, until you just have it memorized. Uh, think of like a phone number, a friend's phone number, and you just end up dialing it so many times, so many times. And eventually, you can memorize that number. Well, that was pre-smartphone. <laughs> I'm pre-smartphone. I am too. I'm just saying some <laughs> people are not. So before, when we used to have to, on the home phone. <laughs> oh, don't be like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, the deeper and deeper you go, or um, fill a lot. Uh, anyways, uh, the deeper and deeper you go. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, if you were, like, wanted to change your phone philosophical viewpoint like the up up you know anyways it's late why are you making me interpret crazy words <laughs> i can do this during the work time okay but so you're like messing with me tonight you're like with your philosophical I, level I one is it. just memorization levels two and three and four those are deeper levels of learning that involve more work and basically um for example, that fourth level that's called extended thinking requires research and work to be done over time. So it's not overnight. It's going to be a process. And so basically all that to say, um, put a little bit more work into the things that you're learning, right? And so one of the ways that we can do this with sign language is uh, kind of dissecting a sign that we've learned. And a good way to do that is by using the five parameters. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what the five parameters are, um, they're H, O, L, M, and sometimes E. And so we like to say, um, if you learn a new sign, take it home with you with an M, H, O, L, M, E. And so just really quickly, uh, the H stands for hand shape. So is it an A hand shape? Is it an S hand shape? What hand shape is it? O, flattened O. And then the next one is going to be O. Uh, o for orientation. <laughs> you threw me off too. I was like, <laughs> um, oh. so wh where's your palms facing? Or like, say for instance, like yours versus mine. Yours, palms facing you. Mine, palms facing me. So, in which way is my palm oriented, or the sign oriented? Oriented. Face is oh. uh, uh, location. Where is it in location or uh, to your body? Is it is it near your forehead? Is it near your chin? Is it near your chest? Is it out from your body? Where is it located? Um, M is for movement. What kind of movement is it? Is it a straight motion or is it kind of a more circular elliptical mo uh, motion? And so what what is the movement? Is it back and forth? Is it up and down? Um, is it one direction? So like think of what is the movement that uh, that sign is using. And E is for expression or sometimes referred to as a non-manual marker. Uh, so this is basically if there's a facial expression or uh, that kind of goes Affect with that um, sign. So like sadness, right? Like you're sad, right? You're excited. You're happy. Um, so 
what is that non-manual marker? What is that facial expression that goes with that sign? And so this, again, it might be a little bit more work, but it, the more work you put into it, the more you're going to be able to recall it. And honestly, it's going to help you with your accuracy a little bit too, because you might be able to dip better differentiate between important and decision and explain and worth it. And, you know, there's lots of signs that are very similar. And that's one of the struggles of learning right. sign language. All of the signs that are very close to each other, sit, ch um, train, uh, uh, briefly or temporarily. Uh, and so like there are all these signs that are very closely related. So breaking down the parameters can be a really great way to be able to not only differentiate between those different signs, but also for you to be able to better recall them in the future. I'm gonna do another name because I'm really excited about number four. Cause I really, I really <laughs> want him to get it. So I'm like, even though he's already a part of it, I, <laughs> the I, rotary phone. <laughs> I really want him to get it, but we're on number yeah. three. I forget how many weeks ago that was, but people are still remembering the brain fart. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There are some signs you will never forget. There's just some out there. My sister will never forget a sign that she learned. By mistake. Oh. That was funny. I'm not going to say it, but it was funny. Um, okay, here we go. Name. This is a male name, a man's name, male name. Um, this is a man's name. It's been a long day. Leave me alone. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, ready? Here we go. I'm going to do it. I'm do it. Nope, it's going to be this hand. Okay. <laughs> it's in the bank with interest. I, I wonder if that was in reference to like um, trying to expose yourself to as much as possible and uh, just keep it in the bank. Um, <laughs> nice. I'm seeing uh, Mark with a K and with a C. Uh, so we did it with M-A-R-K. And it looks like the first person that got it correctly uh, that appears on our end is Angela Hurst. Uh, congratulations. Oh, and so my other favorite person, because I love the name Squidney. No, Squidney. I'll be right back. Uh, Squidney was two. Sassy was three. Um, uh, is it Keeland? And Shayla, Mark with a C, April, Toots Magoots, Melissa. So great job, everybody. So again, it was uh, Angela Hurst that was the first one that appeared on our end. So go ahead and email me at chris at aslbasics.com. Uh, and let me know that you won, and I'll go ahead and send you the Zoom information so you can join our workshop this Friday at 5 p.m. Okay, so just going through the comments again really quickly. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, so now that my uh, teammate has left me, um, let me go ahead and jump right into um, the, th the third one that I was going to mention tonight. Uh, so just to review really quick, the first one was make your active or make your learning more active and less passive. Uh, second one is if you don't know a home or if you don't know a sign, take it home with you, you know, a sign to uh, go through the five different parameters. And the more work you put into it, the more you're going to be get, get out of it. Um, and then the third one that I'm going to mention tonight is, you know, repetition is your friend. It really is because every time that you go back and you review something, you're making that synaptic connection in your brain that much stronger. And one of the things just really quickly, since we're on the uh, topic of neuroscience, um, neuroplasticity is, is um, basically how malleable your brain is and, uh, and how akin it is to be able to learn new things. And one of the really interesting things about neuroplasticity is that it doesn't necessarily degrade that much with age. A lot of times uh, we tell ourselves that we have a hard time uh, learning new things the older we get. But just keep in mind that that neuroplasticity never really goes away, no matter how old we are. Um, so, again, repetition. And so you could use a strategy like spaced repetition in order to make this kind of as effective as possible. Um, to, so uh, one way that you can do this is the three by three technique. And this is a strategy that I picked up in a book um, called Unlimited Memory by Kevin Horsley. And if you ever want to improve your memory, that is a treasure trove of information. So anyways, the three by three uh, technique for space repetition is if you learn something new, review it three times the same day. 
might be a little hard to do, but it, if possible, at the very very least, review it three times uh, in the first three days. So review it once a day for three days. And that's going to help really solidify it in your short-term memory. Next, you will, re you, will, uh, you will review that information once a week for three weeks. And that's going to really solidify it into your midterm memory. And lastly, you will want to review that information once a month for three months. And that's going to really solidify it into your long-term memory. And again, kind of going back to that phone number, or think of anything that you've had to learn over the years that eventually becomes automatic. Um, think of when you're in kindergarten and you were learning how to add. That was a very uh, stressful process in trying to learn how to add and subtract. But over the years, as you did that um, repeatedly, it becomes an automatic process. And learning a new language is that and more. Um, and so you could do that with isolated vocabulary. You can do that. You know, I learned this new sign or I learned five new signs today. So I'm going to review it a lot when I first learn it. And I'm going to review it less and less as time goes forward. Um, another really effective way to do that is by having more frequent conversations. And so what this is, does is it really helps you identify what it is that you want to talk about the most. And so if you're learning a new language, you don't necessarily need to learn 10, 20, 30,000 words to be fluent in that language. You just need to learn what it is, the high, the high frequency language that you use and that the most people that you communicate with use. Did you want to jut in really quick? Um, well, there's a couple of questions in here that are pretty interesting that okay. I wanted to grab really quick. Um, Chris, is it necessary to speak soundlessly with the ASL since people oh, are I living? I did see that earlier. I'm not 100% sure what you mean by it. So, what I have a feeling you mean like, um, like when people are mouthing what they're saying. Like is that is that what you're referring to? So like, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign this, but I want you to see what I'm doing. Like, you see what I'm doing where I'm mouthing. For example, you see that I'm going to sign for you. Like, is that what you, that what you mean? I'm just curious what what you mean by it. So let me know. And then yeah, um, and like lipping while you're I, he said staring at the hand but i'm thinking staring at the hand like you're looking at their hands you know what is the point of mouthing the words as you're signing and so this is going to be very dependent upon okay, who wait. it is that you're trying to communicate with um there are um a subset of the it. deaf community that are very english and they some of them rely on lip reading and mm -hmm. so they're and when you go to get like tested for uh an interpretation certification um for example, like the ESSE or the EIPA. That's a weird um, way to say that. I know. Sorry. Like, um, but anyways, orders. years ago when I took my first certification, it was the ESSE. And I got, um, you need a 4.0 out of a 5. So you need 80% or better to be, to be, to interpret professionally in the state of California. Um, so on, on many of those, I was 4.0 or above. But I was so ASL at the time that I didn't, mouth anything. And one of the things that they will actually um, grade you on is speech readability. And so that's basically, you know, mouthing as you're signing. And you're not supposed to mouth every single word as you're signing. But for instance, in a classroom environment, you're expected to be mouthing like key vocabulary, things that are going to be coming up uh, very frequently in a classroom or things that are going to be on a test. And so being able to produce that on your mouth and associate with a sign is actually really effective in the education field uh, for stu for deaf students in a hearing school. Um, so anyway, so there are many deaf that that is very helpful for them. Others, that might be distracting. Um, so um, if you're studying ASL and you're, you're probably will get to a point where you, they'll discuss mouth morphemes. And these are things like cha or um, stop, stop. So there are different like mouth, you know, Languages Things have morphemes. Things you do with your mouth, like. But yeah, basically, the, you know, to accentuate a certain and it, aspect. It means something. Right. It it provides emphasis on what you're doing. So like, oh, he was he was big. Okay, was he really big? No, he was like cha. <laughs> he was big. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so there's like certain things that you'll do, and then you'll you'll learn that, and that when he 
took his first certification, he was like that. Oh, yeah. He was ASL and he did the mouth morph themes and they deemed him so bad he didn't pass. And he yeah. was like so sad. It, My boss was read, like, the speech okay, readability was okay. a 1.0. And like, even though I got why? like four, 4.5, 5.0, it was the sad. other parts of that certification, <laughs> it was enough to bring me down. Wait. Okay. Right here. Yeah. Pause um, another one. Eliza says, still waiting for you to do a math slash science ASL video. I definitely need to expand my vocabulary around those topics. Now. Okay, so two things with that. I think uh, gonna one, go I'm going to be doing a math video really quickly. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to really shoot for the next two weeks to get that math video out. But secondly, um, aslcore.org. Um, let me go ahead and type that in really quick. And it's again, really, this really, is a resource that we good, have on our resources page on our first. website. STEM classes. But it's this a, one's, oh, this one is really an incredible resource. If you are a student go, uh, learning a particular STEM field, um, another one is from Deaf Tech, and we have both of those linked on our website. But um, if you are an interpreter, if you are a teacher, if you are a student, or if you just want to expand your vocabulary into different STEM fields like science or math, lab sciences, biology, chemistry, Physics, quantum physics. Oh, come on, man. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's signs for those words, and they're but like yeah, not, they're, they're, com they're not uh, or coding too, like uh, uh, programming languages. And so ASLCore.org and DevTech, uh, they both have STEM dictionaries. Uh, DevTech is more math and lab sciences, and ASL Core um, has more a wider range of fields. And what's really cool about that one is that these are signs that are invented by primarily by scientists, deaf scientists in those respective fields. And so these are uh, kind of on the cusp uh, signs that are being invented as we speak. So that's a really cool aspect. And wait, I wait, encourage wait, wait, that wait, resource. Wait, 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 wait. What's the hardest for me when it comes to receptive practice is the grammar. I know that some people sign the sentence exactly how it's said in English, but with proper ASL yeah. grammar, most people sign with the nouns and pronouns in different places. Oh, wait, hold <laughs> on. They say it's kind of how Yoda talks. <laughs> Free friends from Switch Network. Yeah. And that's a very true statement. The hard part about now, we've gone into ASL grammar and the fact that we don't like to go into ASL grammar. Because ASL grammar can be um to each his own <laughs> and i say that because and i'm gonna pull this from bill vickers i don't want it to say like it came from us no this is a deaf professor who said it. it's on his website asl grammar can be done in many different ways he had you remember the examples that bill gave uh, yeah um so i actually encourage you to go ahead and type in asl uh, grammar in google and his he article should be the first, one, be the first one that pops up. And go ahead and read that. It's a, it's a really good read. But anyways, there's one part in that article where he talks about um, how would you translate this sentence? Like, I am from which, Utah. Which one is ASL? Which one grammar? is ASL? And so it was, um, I from Utah, um, I, Utah, I from, or I, I Utah from, I. I or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And right after that, he says, well, actually all three of those can be considered ASL grammar. Um, because it depends. It's I, I, like I said, I hate doing this <laughs> to people, but there is, it's so varied. Cause now for any of you who are taking an ASL class, your teacher will tell you otherwise. <laughs> I know that from experience. Yeah. I really enjoyed Bill Vickers. Um, the article that yeah. he has about it that talks yeah. about ASL grammar. I know it can be very confusing. Don't let that be what hinders um, hinders you from learning or there progressing in the field. In the in the field, sorry. Yeah, I wanted talking. to get this right because hey. I really wanted to quote him directly. And so, sorry. So the three sentences were: uh, the first one was "I from Utah, I," which is probably the one that you would be like, "That's that's ASL." Um, I from Utah. And then the third one was from Utah, I. And so this is what he says on his website. He says, all of the above statements are, quote, ASL. 
And he says, I noticed that some ASL teachers tend to become fanatical about encouraging their students to get as far away from English word order as possible and thus focus on the version from Utah I. Oh, thank um, you. But it has been my experience during my various travels across the United States that the versions I student and I from Utah work great and are less confusing to the majority of people. And so this is one thing that like when we talk to our um, students on a one on one basis and we go over grammar, um, one of the things that we encourage is to not get so caught up in the grammar because it can be a really huge um, roadblock to just having conversations. It'd be more important, like if you had a choice between um, studying ASL grammar in a box and get, being 100% correct as far as true ASL language, but you don't talk to anybody versus going out there and having conversations and getting involved in the deaf community and um, just really putting yourself out there, this is the way to go because um, not, one, not everybody is going to be very strict with their ASL usage. And secondly, it's it's really important to really become a part of that deaf community and, and really go into the reasons why you are learning the language in the first place. You know, um, if I'm just learning to sign to myself in a mirror, but I'm accurate, that doesn't really do anybody any good. You know, we want to encourage you to really uh, go out there and uh, become a part of, of the community. And it's hard to do that if you're just learning in a box, kind of secluded. Mm -hmm. um, well, and I, I kind of like what um, what Melissa said, where she says, let the other person sign first to tell you how to proceed. <laughs> That's an interpreter trick. Absolutely. <laughs> so as interpreters, we are required to be very moldable and to be able to change like this. One of the tricks that I do that I think a lot of interpreters do is when we get to a job, we meet the client. I talk to them briefly because I want to see how they work. How do they sign? How do they prefer things? How do they, how, because about how they're going to do it is how I need to produce it back to them for them to understand me. Sometimes that's hard to do though. Sometimes it's like really hard for us to know, be able to make that switch unless you're trained to do it or if you practice doing it. But pretty much, believe it or not, you know, deaf people, they'll understand you. It doesn't matter if you're proper ASL grammar. It doesn't matter if you're English grammar. It doesn't matter. They'll understand you. It's hard for you when you're used to it being a certain way and somebody's grammar shifts and you're like, oh, man, that's kind of that's throwing off my brain because that's not how my brain is processing the information. But that's where getting as much exposure to the deaf community as you can to finding these different ways that people are signing because no no deaf person is going to sign uh, the same way. And recently I was watching a documentary called Hear, um, Hear What I'm Saying. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Hear what I'm, see what I'm saying. See what I'm saying. Do you see what I'm saying is what it was called. It's a, it's a documentary. See and what I'm saying. Oh, wait. I think it's See What I'm Saying. Dang it. <laughs> Anyways, it's about ASL and the deaf and everything. And one of the deaf teachers there, that was one of the first things he said. He goes, a lot of people think sign language is just one way, but it's not. There's such a variety of ways that you're going to see it come out, produced and everything. And not to be afraid of, of the change in grammar. See what yeah. I'm saying. See what That's I'm what saying. It's called. Yeah. yeah. But not to be afraid of the change in grammar, that, that it's okay, but just expose yourself to it as much as you can. And eventually your brain's just going to be able to make those changes and, you know, go from there. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, just, just really quick, um, well, since we're on the topic, because um, it is such a roadblock to many of us that are just getting started. One of the more important aspects of the grammar is topic comment. And you can kind of get a really far and get it maybe like 80% of the way there without having to do a whole lot of mental processing without having to do a lot of second guessing on yourself. Um, basically, oh, topic comment is, you know, topic being the thing that you're talking about and comment is the thing that you want to talk about. It. Um, maybe like a, I, I just bought a brand new car. The car is the topic. That's the thing that you want to talk about. And then everything else comes after it. Um, and if you want to add another layer to that, if it has any kind of time parameter, that time actually comes first, which is time, topic, comment. And if it's a question, the question goes on the end. So basically, you know, 
think about what you want to talk about, and then you can explain what it is that you want to talk about. If that makes sense? Yes, I'm just, then, I, I cannot read and sign at the same time. Um, anyways, oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh my gosh, I'm running out of time for something. Okay, <laughs> I need to get to this fourth name because it's really important to me. <laughs> it is, okay. Hopefully he's watching. <laughs> he is watching, I see him comment. Okay, um, so. <laughs> I saw uh, him. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's right there. there. I see him. Okay. Okay. Ready? So this is a man's name. And we know this person. I hope you're watching. Ready? Unless there's a lag, then that's kind of, that's going to suck, but he'll get it. Ready? Here we go. Another one of my favorite people. <laughs> so one of my favorites. Um, you know what? I do. Um, really quickly, this is a pretty easy question to answer. How old do you have to be to be an interpreter? That's a very good question. I know an interpreter who was an interpreter at 15. Crazy, right? I know another interpreter who started interpreting at 18. Um, I know of an interpreter who didn't start until her mid-20s. There's really not necessarily... I would say an age requirement per se. Um, I My biggest thing is to just make sure that you're certified. Um, however, there are interpreters who interpret who aren't certified because not all places require it. Community colleges, there's a loophole. You don't have to be uh, certified to interpret at a community college. Um, but most companies will require you to be certified medically. Absolutely. So, you know, yeah. It's not really, you know, wait, wait, wait. People are getting it. Here we go. Ah, yes. Wait, where are you? I'm like looking. I'm looking for you. I think there's a delay on his side because he said it was his screen's been freezing, but wait. Okay. Um, so first one on our end is Toots Magoots, but she said, don't pick me. <laughs> me, but it's Jerry. Uh, Shayla it was the second Jerry, one. Jerry, where are you? <laughs> uh, I'm not seeing Jerry. Maybe he, maybe he ducked out. <laughs> no, he didn't. Um, okay, okay hold on. so anyways, uh, the first one that popped up on our mind that wasn't Toots Magoots was uh, Shayla. So go ahead and let us know. I want to um, say that you've already won, but I can't remember. Let me know. Yeah, we'll have <laughs> let to start me keeping track for sure. Um, man. But yeah, just go ahead and right let here. us know. Then um, it was but, Sassy. Yeah. Then it was Melissa. <laughs> See, Destiny, Annette. Destiny, Annette, Julia. Julia Susanna. Susanna. Sarah. Sarah, Kathy, Kathy, with a K, with a K, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, hold on, he's coming. I know he's coming. Um, uh, anyways, <laughs> everybody who knows, so she... they're like, "Ah, Jerry." Uh, uh, oh, I, I should start. She can't go. Uh, okay. Shayla, so hold on. Wait, who's second on the list? Wait, hold on. It takes me a minute. Shayla, right here. There's a uh, lot of comments. Sassy Shayla, already won. Melissa, Melissa already won. Destiny. Destiny Sims. Destiny Sims. So. Let us know if you're here. I'm sure you are. Um, scroll down. Mm. Oh, mm -hmm. I understand. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Jerry, um, really wait, quick. Uh, somebody email was. Email. Uh, uh, email is right here. Somebody was uh, saying like as far as like the variability to the grammar, it's kind of like English. And uh, English, even within the United States, it differs a lot. The way my family talked in California compared to her family oh. from Florida, they talk very differently. <laughs> and, you know, there's South and there's people from Boston and New York area. My and dad's from Indiana, in the, in the so they say things differently there. And there's just different ways. You know, the structure is loosely the same, uh, but then there's just different ways of salutations. There's different ways of greeting each other. And, salutations. Um, <laughs> You're funny words. He uses, like, the craziest words. You see? You see? his <laughs> funny words. Um um wait 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 wait. yeah so this is a little harder um it's a little easier to learn uh sign languages that are a little more um common like you know asl of course but there then there's um there are some ways that you can learn other sign languages like um like australian sign language Oops. and um, indian sign language french sign language mexican sign language and um basically there just kind of go into there's not as many resources for other sign languages compared to ASL, um, but they're definitely out there. It might just take a little uh, extra research to find it. We are running very close to the end of our time and we still, 
We've got a few more things. <laughs> so I'm going to drop this last name. Now, this is your challenge name. Okay. And I say that because it's long. I'm just warning you right now. Okay. So uh, really quick, Destiny, um, go ahead and send Chris an email to that Chris at ASLbasics.com with your name and just letting him know that you won. And then he'll get you all set up for the link and everything. Okay. So this name is long. Okay. It's long. It's very common, but it's long. So what I want you to do with this is I don't want you to look at it and go this letter, that letter, this letter, that letter, this letter, that letter, this. No, I want you to sound it out as I fingerspell it, sound it out. And believe me by the first three, maybe four letters, you're going to figure it out. Okay. Here we go. You're doing it? I'm doing it. <laughs> See, I was going to be mean. <laughs> no. That's me. <laughs> I will say uh, it's kind of nice with this particular camera because it's not nearly as blurry as I know. that web camera. Okay. So that's what it was. Like I said, it's very common. You guys should figure it out fairly quickly by the first three or four letters. Bam! <laughs> Good job, guys. Yes. I love how people are saying not me because they know they've already won. That's cool. <laughs> that that helps cool. me a lot. Um, Let's see, we got, whoops. But it it yes. moved on me. Uh, so the first one. First person on, who got it was, was Melissa. Melissa. Melissa's you, like lightning. Right? <laughs> Uh, um, Susanna T, I don't think you've won yet. I don't and think so you, have you are the first one that pops up on our end. So, congratulations. Uh, you won free access to our next workshop. Uh, just send me an email at chris at aslbasics.com and we'll set you up. Okay. And I'm still, did he leave? Okay. I think um, he did. You think Jerry leave. left? Oh, I think Jerry. he did too. All right, Jerry, I'm calling you out on it next Wednesday. I'm going to tell. There he is, Jerry. <laughs> 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 I was gonna say, Jerry, you left me. Okay, cool. Um, All right. Um, there was, you know what? Let's because again, we got nine minutes left. So yeah. really fast. The announcement that we have tonight, where I mean, some people are gonna probably be bummed, but um, we've been doing the live stream for about <clears throat> six months, and we're actually going to not end it but we're only going to be doing it once a month. We've been doing it weekly for about six months, but we're going to shorten that to just one time a month. Um, we're just swamped with work and everything. And so we're, we're like, okay, what can we do? Um, we thought about stopping it all together, but we didn't want to do that either. Cause we really enjoy it. We really enjoy answering everybody's questions and talking to everybody and you guys teach us stuff which i love because we're all we're always still learning and i will never claim to be professional like pro like i'm like proficient at anything nope mm -mm, i'm forever a student i'm forever learning and so you guys always teach us new stuff too so i love that so we're like no we're not gonna like just stop it but we're going to do it once a month and then probably in the summer when things go calm down. There's a lot of changes happening right now because um, the schools in our area are opening back up in person, which him as an educational, as an educational interpreter, it changes things. And so there's a whole new shift in schedules and it's, it's been a mess. So that's why we're like, you know what, maybe until the end of the school year, we're going to put a hold on it and only do it once a month. So that's something that we're going to be doing uh, effective next week. This yeah, will be the I last think one. We'll probably for... the, the next live stream will be around probably like the last Wednesday. The last the Wednesday month. of April. Um, because this is the last. Well, this isn't the last. What, what day is it? No, it's not so the today last is the twenty fourth. So it'll but... be the twenty eighth. So the next live stream we'll do will be <laughs> April twenty eighth. I, I know, know. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> I know. Um. Yeah. yeah, that's why I said sure. some people are gonna be like sad. They're like, wait a minute. <laughs> but hopefully when the summer comes, we'll go back to because you know, everybody goes on vacation, you know, school's out for the summer. 
Ooh, age myself. Oh, that's cool. Uh, that's, um, Susanna T. I took your tip and sounded it out. Oh, so, great. Yeah. But yeah, so I, that's definitely something we wanted to, we wanted to <laughs> let you guys know that we're going to do. And I'm sorry, but we will be doing our, we're still going to continue our weekly group practice every Wednesday night. That is still something that's going to continue on. So I don't want for all those who join us on Wednesday nights for that, that has not changed. That will still be there. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, we hold weekly uh, Wednesday night group practices on Zoom. And if you're a Patreon member, if you're a YouTube member, if you're um, even if you're just a part of his newsletters, you have access, free access to those um, Wednesday night group practice sessions. A lot of fun. We've been doing that for, it'll be a year yeah. on next Thursday, April 1st. And the very first person who joined us that day was Jerry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we've been doing that for about a year. So if you're interested in doing that, feel free to sign up for his newsletters. And then that's on his website. There's other ways to do it too. I just don't know how. How do you do it? Um, there's a link in the description down oh, below. There's a link in um, the description. I'm like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not tech savvy. And, and I try to be really good about um, making sure I include everything that we mentioned throughout these live streams in the description. Um, oh, and I didn't even get the chance to talk about uh, the new channel that we just launched uh, this last week. There's too. a story about that one too. <laughs> so we've always talked about blogging, like, no, not blogging, blogging, like our trips and stuff that we do. We do some fun things and we're doing like this massive one in Utah this summer and, and all that stuff. But he was like, hey, what'd be cool is setting up a separate YouTube channel. He wants it to be mine because I'm the one that's like a lot. He's the teacher. I'm the one who will just ramble. But it talks about, you know these different uh, tips and tricks when you travel, um, cool things to do in the United States, all the different national parks that we go to, cool trails to do, how to do it, what not to do, the do's and don'ts, you know, learn from our mistakes type thing. So that's something that just launched. The video that he launched, I wasn't prepared for, for it to be that. So it's not my best video because I wasn't really ready for it, <laughs> but- Are you talking about the Sequoia? Yes, the Sequoia one. <laughs> That I was like that not one. supposed to be the one I um, used. I'm actually really excited ah. for the next one. Um, that one we go to uh, Lake uh, Kawea. And oh, yeah. during the summer, it was really cool because it was pretty full. Um, but unfortunately, because we haven't had a lot of rain at my door. and uh, there's been a lot of, uh, it's, it's, kind of it's more of a reservoir um, and the water can build up. And as the, they need it for the agriculture here in the area, yeah. they'll, they'll drain it and use some of the water for that. But anyways, last time we went, it was low. It was just, it was this huge lake and now it's whoop, a little bit of a puddle. So we were actually like driving around on the bottom of what used to be a lake. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a really cool one. So that one is actually going to be, I was going to wait till Friday, but I think I'm going to go ahead and publish it tomorrow. So um, go ahead and check out the channel. I left a link for that channel in the description down below here too. Um, and it's also gonna let's be see like here. So I have the newsletters talking. down there. <laughs> it's just, it's going to be me talking about cool stuff to do how to do it it'll be how not like, to get stuck when you're go out in the desert <laughs> been there done that you know and just like fun little tips and tricks you know Paige is going to be in it you know it's it's what we do we go out and do these like adventurous things and stuff so outside of this <laughs> so you guys will get to if you watch the video uh -oh. Hi. <laughs> speak are your ears burning right she's like you said my name i'm coming in <laughs> so uh, anyways, yeah, I forgot. I didn't have time to do the Instagram update. Um, I, I, we, we tried the best we can because there's Facebook, there's Patreon, there's YouTube. And so we try to notify everybody and the newsletters. Um, I'm not responsible for any of that. I, I ran out of time you for Instagram just because today we were juggling like a, a, lot. a lot. There's a lot. Um, there's a lot. So yeah. Um, Oh yeah, the General Sherman tree. So the last time we went, we did, um, and I actually included a, uh, a photo from the last time we went up there. We talked about General Sherman a little bit. It's the largest tree on earth, which is really cool. Uh, we've seen it a couple times over the years, um, but it's not necessarily the tallest or the oldest, but it's the largest volumetrically. And it is massive. And so if you're ever in the central California area near the Sierra Nevada mountains, definitely check it out. It's not too far from Yosemite. And um, yeah, so the video that we published Monday, we went up to the Sequoias 
and it was covered in snow. It was absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, we, um, it ended on a sour note. And if you've seen the video, you know what we're talking about. If you haven't, um, go, so check, go ahead and check it out. So sad. Um, yeah, Jerry, don't worry. I'll have Chris, Chris will look into yeah, that for definitely. you for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that was it. Um, I'm trying to look. That's a very good question. And this that, one right here? No, not that one. That one. This one? That one. Uh, will, will you, you guys, guys consider making the practice sessions a little longer since there will be no live stream? Yeah, actually, uh, I think we will. Mm -hmm. um, actually, tonight, we because we've been so scrambling from closing the practice sessions for, that start at 5 and then we end up at like 5.40 and then we jump on here at like, 5.45. Oh, We're trying to set everything up. He, he changed the um, live so stream time to 6. I changed it to 6. So he everybody changed. tonight got about a half hour's worth of practice mm -hmm. in instead of like 20 minutes. Uh, so but definitely yeah, definitely probably we'll make them a little the, longer. The practice sessions are going to expand more. They're going to be a little longer. Yeah. And we can answer questions and kind of do a more interactive thing. And Zoom is a nice way to kind of see everybody's face to face. And when you're talking about signs, it's a lot easier to see a sign than to describe it <laughs> in a comment. But yeah, <laughs> sour note. Yeah. No joke. Um, cool, cool. <clears throat> you learn things, you see, you learn things. And that's why I, I talk about it because I'm like, oh my God. No, but we, I, yeah, we're going to be doing some really cool trips. Um, I'll have to check this one out. This uh, Dinawara singing and saying that the tallest tree is actually um, called the Coast Redwood. And I'm probably up in the Redwood Forest in Northern California. Well, I'm going to go check that out. I'll have out. to go check that out for sure. Um, yeah, I'll definitely go look at Patreon. Um, thank you. Have a good night. Yeah, we're at the top of the hour. And ooh, I think I just clap, clapped into that microphone. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, everyone's like, oh, my God. But, but as always, we really appreciate everybody that have been able to join us tonight. And we look forward to seeing you uh, next week in the Zoom session for the practice group. Again, if you'd like to sign up for that, the newsletter, the link to the newsletters is in the description down below. I also linked the two books that we had okay. mentioned earlier in the live stream, um, Visible Learning and yes. uh, Motivated Brain. Uh, these are, if again, if you're a parent or an educator or even a student that wants to learn more efficiently, those mm -hmm. are incredible reads and I highly recommend them. Uh, yes. Um, same time. The group practice session will stay the same at five. Yeah. So don't, five. yeah, don't worry about that. So. Okay, you guys, we'll either see you next week for in the group practice session or we'll see you guys April 28th. I know, It'll, but it's okay. It'll be okay. We'll see you guys soon. I promise. I promise. <laughs> All right. Good night, guys. Good night.